Thank you for taking the time today to come and have a look at HR on board, Amazing New Starter Journeys. Um, so what I'm going to take you through in this video is um, a little bit about how to send out the job offers. So sending out a job offer to a new employee and then the employee experience in accepting that job offer. So I'm going to try and keep it as um, as generic as I can, um, whilst having a little bit of what schools do um, added into the, the flow so that you can see how it's going to work for you as a school. Now, there's two different ways that you can get someone into HR on board. If you're not using a recruitment system, you simply go through and click create, and then you start filling in the information. So the minimum required information is first name, last name, email address, and mobile number, and start date. And obviously, you can have multiple campuses as well. Um, but here's one that I've prepared earlier. Um, and this would um, is essentially how it would work if you are using recruitment software that we can have an integration to. So there's um, many recruitment software vendors out there and we have um, integrations into all of the main plays here in Australia. Um, so I will click on Australian Onboard. And um, just for my environment, I just need to select education. That won't happen in the normal environment. Um, but you just need to go through and fill this information in. Now, because it's come through from recruitment software, it has actually pre-filled um, some address information. Um, but here's some uh, drop-down menus that are basically set up for education. So you can then determine based on what type of contract you're issuing, um, will determine what's drop down are available for you. So if they're teaching, these may be some of the selections. Now everything through here is completely configurable. So if this is not language that you use, um, we essentially will change it to what you use. So if we um, will go through and change it up a little. Um, and then the appointment status, is it going to be permanent or fixed term? and then full-time or part-time. So once again, these are all um, completely configurable based around your requirements. Um, now within the um, education sector, there are uh, um, different grades, I guess. Um, so it will be able to determine what the lower limit and the upper limit is. Now, obviously the data that I have in my system is made up data, um, but if you also have allowances and those sorts of things, you can have the system calculate that for you. So it's kind of like an award interpreter. Um, and if we save and continue, it's not going to allow us to continue on because it's actually saying, well, what you've selected is higher, the salary is higher than the maximum amount. So we'll just go in and change that um, to continue and save and continue. So what's happened in the background is it's got some information available there um, for us and it's going to put that into a contract for us. Now, because I've selected full time, I just need to add my full time contract in and it will have now pulled all of that information that I've previously entered on the page prior into this contract. So we can see the address information, but I'll scroll all the way to the final page. Now we can see exactly what um, is um, for this employee, what's required uh, for their contract. Um, so that contract is now added into the workflow. Um, once again, we use all of your contracts um, and we upload them as part of the implementation. We work with you to have them uploaded with placeholders so that you choose from your own contracts. We also have the opportunity to, um, any policies you'd like them to accept as part of the offer acceptance. Um, this is where policies can be added here. And again, each workflow can be completely tailored and configured. So you might have different policies that your PE teachers accept um, or coaching staff accept versus um, different policies that um, a volunteer in, who works in the tuck shop might accept. So really each journey is based around your requirements and what they need to see. We also have supporting information. So this is nice to know information, doesn't necessarily have to be opened or agreed upon. At a bare minimum, you do need the fair work statement. So we manage that for you and keep that uploaded. It's one of the beauties about using software uh, like HR on board is we'll keep abreast of those changes and let you know if anything needs to be updated and we'll update your environment for you. Now, the last thing that you can see is internal files. So this moves through the process 
with the new hire, but they actually don't get to see that. So I've seen some uh, schools will up, upload a copy of their resume here. Um, if you're not using recruitment software, you certainly can add a resume there. Um, or you could, if you um, have offered a rate higher than um, what would be classed as that level and you received authorization, you could upload an email trail there. But for today, I'll just go and click continue. So what you're looking at now are back office tasks. This is where you can get some really good bang for your buck with HR on board and really automate that process for HR. We all know that when we have someone new starting, there's often a, a whole heap of things that need to be done. Um, they might need access to, um, they, they'll need an IT profile, they might need keys to the, to the classroom they work in, they might need a car park pass, uh, all of these things that need to be ordered for them. And generally HR or HR admin will be spending their days away emailing to get these tasks completed. That no longer is the case. With HR on board, you just set up your task once and then every new hire that comes through will have the tasks that are allocated to that role. So we'll just send this one off for review. Now within HR on board, there is a review process. Uh, so that means if you have your business manager or your um, principal who would like to review and uh, approve those offers before sending them out, um, we make it nice and easy so they can do so. So all they'll need to do is they'll receive notification uh, that their offer is ready for review and they can just click through um, from a mobile device or from their desktop, it's up to them. Um, if they're someone who's on the road a lot, it makes sense to do it on a mobile device, but it's really just clicking through and approving this job offer. So once you click approve and you're stating everything is correct, the job offer should now be sent to the new employee. So I've just received an SMS on my mobile phone um, saying, congratulations, Kirsty. we're pleased to offer you employment at the Marin Co. Please check your email for a link to review and accept your offer. Now, the Marin Co. is our made up name, um, made up company. So I'm just gonna log out um, from the back office and then I'll log in as the employee. So that job offer has been sent out. So that's everything that HR will need to do um, to send out a job offer done just in a couple of minutes. Now, from a new hire's perspective, I'll just go to the email for the new hire. So from the new hire's perspective, they'll receive an SMS and then they'll also receive an email. Now, even the wording in the email and all the branding is completely configurable. So your words, your brand. Um, the first time you log in, you just need to enter in a password and set the password. That makes it handy if you need to log in and log back out again um, as someone entering this information. Um, it makes it nice and easy. So um, as I mentioned, this can be done on a mobile device as well. So if I just go like this and show you my mobile screen, see how it fits nicely into a mobile device now. So there's no scrolling left and right. It's just nice and easy to actually go through and continue. Um, so on that first page, I'll just close that down. On that first page that we see here, um, we're just gonna be filling in everything on the left-hand side. If I have any questions along the way, I can send off questions and that will be emailed through to HR um, as whoever sent out the job offer to them. Um, and all of this information will um, be required to be filled in by the new starter. Now, once again, everything's completely configurable. So if you don't use the terms emergency contact and you use the term next of kin, that's what we'll collect. If you have it mandatory that your employees have two emergency contacts, then we make it mandatory that they cannot um, move past this unless they have two emergency contact. And the same with um, split pays. If you allow them to organise a secondary bank account, we can do this for them um, as they're onboarded. So really, they're just filling in all of this information and save and continue. Once we get to the next page, um, there's further documentation that is required around uh, their work rights. So with work rights, um, it's as simple as um, uploading the required documentation. We make it nice and easy for you um, as we'll have some pictures there um, of what is required and um, that what can be uploaded. Now, if you are hiring with work visas, you can actually um, ask further, there is further information to be asked, such as what type of visa and passport numbers and those sorts of things. 
but I'll just go on through and so uh, and continue. So this is where we go through and enter the working with children check information. So um, this is really good for education. There's no, there's no more chasing around all of this information. Um, so we'll just go through, do you have current working with children? So they'll ask for the application number and the expiry date. Now um, we find that um, this is generally enough, but you can request for it to be uploaded if you choose to, um, it's up to you. So then just put an expiry date and save and continue. If you select no with the working with children's check, it will take you, uh, give you a link to apply and request for the actual application number to be submitted. Um, and this is just showing that we can link out to a national police check. So if um, you require a police check, we can pop the link in here. Um, but for today, I'll just save and continue. Now we're at the exciting part where they get to accept their uh, job offer. So they need to download to accept. I agree to the terms of the employment contract, download to accept. I've read, understood and agree to comply with the internet usage policy. So for the, uh, if you have multiple policies here, there's no, there's no limit to the number of policies. They'll just need to download to accept each time and accept and continue. Um, so it's now sent me another SMS and the SMS code, I'll just pop that in. Um, so it, it does two factor. So it's making sure that the right person is the person going through and entering in these details and we're verifying that by sending codes to their phone. So making it nice and secure. So we're now entering in our tax file numbers. So um, just my tax file number has been pre-filled, but if you see I remove uh, the two and change it to a one. Um, it's going to come back and say that it's not a correct tax file number. Tax file numbers in Australia are actually built around the algorithm, which means that um, if it doesn't fit within the algorithm, our system will reject it. Um, and just filling in all of this information and save and continue. So that's your tax form done. It's really nice and easy and simple. Um, and, and that's why we get such good results because it's nice and easy for the employee to go through and do things um, you know, in a timely manner. Here we have uh, the superannuation choices form. So it's as simple as selecting the option. If they're happy to go with your fund, it's as simple as save and continue. If they would like to go with their own fund, there's obviously further information and documentation that is required. Uh, but today to keep things simple, we just click through, save and continue. So on the next page, we've got um, qualification and skills. So this may be the qualification information that you'd like to be, um, to have updated. Um, so this is mandatory. Um, the information that's required, what the description is. Um, also, the institution is mandatory and the level is mandatory. So we'll just go through and enter the obtain date. And um, now we'll see, um, it is required that you do upload a copy of the, we'll just pop that internet usage policy there, but it is required that they do upload a, co a copy of the certificate. Um, so it's up to you, we have it mandatory. Um, it's up to you um, if you make that mandatory or if it's something that they can supply later. Once again, it's completely configurable based around your requirements. Um, obviously you need to have first aid. So uh, if they don't have first aid, um, it's just a question. Um, you can have it linked out to a first aid provider if you'd like them to attend first aid. Um, otherwise, obviously, they can enter in their expiry dates and those sorts of things. Um,
All right, um, and child protection training. So further documentation that is required. So in this environment, this is not a mandatory field. So we can technically go through and save and continue at this stage. But as you can see, you can collect as much or as little information that you require. And the, the purpose for this is getting all of that information so that you're actually not chasing around any for, for any of that um, documentation once they, um, you know, once they start and you've got everything required. Um, lastly, this is just to show that we can request a uniform. Um, I'll just go and send this off. This might be for coaching staff, these sorts of things, and save and continue. So um, a T-shirt might be ready for them on their first day, that type of thing. Um, we don't see, we, we see a couple of schools that might have this, but it's certainly not something that is um, wildly um, used within education. So everything is now done from the new starters perspective. Um, they then go on the employee journey. So there will be another video available for the employee journey. But what's been happening in the background um, whilst the employee has been completing this is, is pretty exciting. So firstly, I'll just go through to um, payroll, sorry, HR admin. So we sent that question through earlier. So they just received notification that there was a question um, and you can actually uh, respond straight back to that and it will go through to the, as you can see, it goes through to the employee email. So it makes it nice and easy for you. There's no, you know, searching for their details. Um, and you also receive notification once um, the employee has accepted their job offer, which is nice to know that the role's been filled. Now, the other thing that happens in the background is payroll will receive notification um, that everything has been completed on their end. Now, I'm just gonna log in as payroll. Now, sorry, I'm logging in and logging out. Um, there is single sign-on, but it doesn't work for me as I log in and log out as multiple environments. Um, so here's the last step for payroll. So essentially, um, you come into the system and you can have a look. We have some payroll providers who wanna go see um, how they've answered the tax. Did they put yes or no for the tax-free threshold? Um, but essentially, what we recommend is you download all documents and forms because you'll upload that into Synergetic later, but then you mark that as processed. So marking that as processed is what pushes that through to Synergetic. Um, and they'll be sitting in Synergetic waiting for further action. Now, what that looks like um, from Synergetic's end, now I don't have an access to their system, um, but there is detailed um, on Synergetic website, and I can also provide you with the link. Um, there is details um, for what to do once you've onboarded somebody um, through HR on board and where they sit within um, Synergetic once that's pushed through. So they will go through into the action um, message center. So you will need to go in and action that and then push them through as um, confirm that the data is correct, create a new community record um, and then um, staff details. So there's a couple of things that you need to do um, on the synergetic side, but all of that data that we've collected in HR on board is now in synergetic. So there's no double data handling. So all you then do is uh, link your um, the file that you downloaded from HR on board into Synergetic and off you go. So if you have any further questions about HR on board, um, please reach out. Um, my contact details will be available on the screen. Um, you can also try HR on board for yourself using our try function. And that information is also available on your screen right now. I hope you've enjoyed um, today's uh, demo. And if you've got any questions, we're here to help. Thank you.